Everybody, it's Bruce with Nature Calls, and I've got the brand new Hilleberg Alloc 3. Um, I used the Alloc 2 last year up on the Summit Lake hike. I'll put a link to that hike there. We had that and the Stika, and then there's another guy with a Caron 4 GT up there. Uh, we stayed in the Alloc 2, had two 25 inch mats. Um, and a dog, and it was just it was just small. It was too small for me, and I was really hoping the Stiko was a little too big for me. Um, and I was going, God, I wish I would love to have the Alec, uh, but in a three-person size. And they came out with it, so I'm really excited. I'm doing a home setup. Plus, I always get requests to have equipment and things like that in the tent, and to have multiple sleep mats and all that. I'm just doing it at home this time, but it's good because I'm hoping to get it up in the snow real soon. First off, a uh, request from a viewer. So to make uh, give some reference point, that's a one liter Nalgene bottle. Uh, you know, if you squished it down completely, um, that's what it would look like. Uh, future reference for people, most tents, most manufacturers will make it so it'll fit in a backpack. So, you know, if you're looking at this 21 inches, that's pretty standard. Um, Pretty standard. So around the middle, we're looking at 28 uncompressed, 22 compressed. So that's with everything in it. And I'll put all the specs down in the comments below, or you can go to the Hilleberg website and see all the different specs on it. But it's eight pounds, three ounces, or 3.7 kilograms, I think. Um, and that includes the stuff sacks, the pegs, the poles, the extra uh, pole and repair kit, um, lines, everything. Here looking at the the bottom of it or the the uh, bathtub floor, I think that's a 70 denier, just beautiful fabrics. Here's the pole and stake bags and I think that is same uh, Curlon 1200. Now the Curlon 1200, that, I'll have to ask them, that's probably Curlon 1200 as well, but um, probably one of the biggest positives about Hilleberg is their fabric. Well, of course, their design and all that, but their fabric and the materials they use are top, top notch. So there you can see there's a, a spare pole in there and a pole sleeve kit. And when you set it up, all tents have a, a nice orientation to the wind. And looking at this, this where they have the Hilleberg label with the Alloc 3, uh, this is what I would put into the wind if you see that. So it's always nice to be able to mark out a spot that it, you can put into the wind. That'd be the prevailing wind, of course, or you know, it was ever happening at the time, but it looks like they put the label right where you would want the prevailing wind. Take a look at the Curlon 1200, which is the red label tent. Um, just beautiful fabric. It's triple impregnated silicone, um, sil nylon, and the stitching is just, I learned a ton from the manufacturing and inspecting how they do things. It's just perfect. And there's always one person over there in Estonia that, or, um, that's making these just beautiful construction and the floor is a different uh, I think it's 70 denier type of floor but it's, it's definitely tough. On the red label tents you'll get this DAC Featherlight NSL Green um, it's the nine millimeters Let's see if I can find that but yeah if you look up the DAC and their process of making these poles it's it's the best out there so uh, they've got three poles and they're all the same length. And you're putting your poles together, make sure they're all well seated in. If there's gonna be a failure, you know, majority of tent failures are with the poles. And so you wanna inspect your poles, you wanna make sure they're all seated correctly. And so there won't be any, you know, the wrong torque and tension and have them, have them fail on you. And on, they are all, all three poles are the same length. That's what's nice. That's what I love about how, you know, when they designed their tents, they obviously took that into account is how can we make our poles easier? So they designed the tent so you had three the same length. I think that's really cool. Let's get 
put the poles in. The other question is, which poles do you do first? Now, what I do is I put the two poles that are going with the wind first, and then I would do the cross pole. Um, put in these nice, these are that heavier, a little more rubberized um, pole sleeves, and then a really heavy duty pole cup. Now they have put ribbons, so the corresponding pocket on the other side of this one would be blue, and then they have white and they have red. So not that it's a huge confusing, but that's just a nice touch. So insert the pole all the way down. You want to get it all the way down into this heavy duty um, rubberized piece of fabric down here. And then this is heavy duty fabric here. Again, I just love the construction of all this. I'll go and I will insert those on the other end. Place them all the way down. There's my two longitudinals in. Now I will do the crossbar. Now if it's a real windy situation, they recommend you kind of walking around clipping it and having it come up. And having it come up gradually all, t all together. Of course, if it was super windy, I would be staking this all out and using guy lines and making sure, but there's no wind. I'm doing the test setup actually. So you just kind of keep going around and bringing it up a little at a time. The stakes you get, I think you get 14 of these, of the V stakes, uh, DAC, super lightweight, super strong. What's nice on this actually is that you have, you have two guy lines and they set their guy lines in such awesome spots. But this upper guy line, you wanna bring that around the pole. And then that, that really connects the tent to the pole and really adds to the overall strength of the tent for sure. This is their, their special line. I love this line. I've had these tents out in the cold where these lines have got wet, and icy, and they're really grippy. They don't stretch. They don't have an outer sheath that slides like paracord. They're just always grippy and their line locks are super easy to use. Especially with gloves on. You wanna put your stakes in at a 45 degree angle and press them all the way down pretty far, as far as you can go. And there's little notches on this stake, but you want as much into the ground as you can go. And we're going to tension these just so they're putting some nice tension on the poles, but not deforming the poles. Now, before I put the rain fly on, just want to show you that they have a vent above each door that's a breathable, um, you know, highly breathable, that has a DWR on it. This will be covered by the rain fly. Uh, that can be opened up completely. And now the rain fly, you can, so what's nice is like, see that's coming from the wind side as well. So the wind will, will carry it over for you. And you just clip it on to some little rings. That gives you a rain fly. Now the rain fly also has tie outs. And if you're going into a real humid spot, you know, ventilation in any tent to keep the condensation down is everything. So you could even tie that out and that would make sure that it's not closing up at all. And they've got those on all the way around, but that's an additional tie out, guy out point. Now to really bring this design together, I'm gonna tighten that rain fly down. That'll give us just a rock solid tent. 
Now around each door you have that rubberized material. It's very similar. I don't know if it's the same as the stuff they have in the pockets. It's a little more rubbery. So that keeps, that's another rain catch. <laughs> Unzip it. They do serious testing on all their, their zippers. It's real important to keep those tent doors off the, the ground. That's where they get repair issues. It's with the people letting their zippers get into the dirt. So keep those tent doors up out of the dirt. Nice tied back. And down here, this is a door band and it can be removed if you want to, but this door band is really important to have that tension correctly. So the door when it's zipped up, the outer door when it's zipped up has a proper tension on it. Sometimes that this gets loose or people loosen it up and there's too much tension on the zipper. So make sure you, you know, keep it where the, where they set it, which is the right spot, or just make sure it's not, your doors aren't taking too much of the load, but just enough to keep the tent nice and stretched. Here's the nice uh, bathtub floor. You can see that's super, super high. It's a good eight inches, comes up to, this is an all season tent. So you'll have fabric up with the bug screen on the outside, but this fabric. So in an all season tent, you'd have the sides coming all the way to the ground. So that's keeping rain and snow from coming in. And then the inner tent also has another barrier to having that snow come in. So that's where you'll see this fabric, this yellow fabric on the inside. And that way you have an all season tent. So right there you can see the suspension. So the inner tent is suspended off the outer tent, you know, a good four inches or so. And it all goes up at the same time. That's really the beauty of the Hillebrick tent is, is that the inner and the outer go up at the same time. So if you, if you do your practice and you get it set up right, you can always end up with a dry inner tent. Um, and then if you want, you can remove this whole inner tent um, to have like a bigger area in here. Well, super interesting. It's right here, they've added a little triangle of that rubber and that's probably to keep it so if it's really windy that those uh, zippers don't clang back and forth. I haven't seen that one yet. So you have a, an inverse T door. And on the inside, you can unzip the, the bug mesh. So there you have just the bug mesh. So that's a real nice, nice feature. And to keep it from getting too, too humid in there if you're working on, if it's a hotter day. And this whole outer tent can be set up, or this whole inner tent could be set up by itself as just a regular tent. You can get some pole uh, fittings. And you can also get second poles, these, these, uh, Pole sleeves are designed to have two poles. I'll put all the inner dimensions, but this is a three-person tent. You know, and in what tent manufacturers is, they basically take 20-inch mats, and that's their person. Um, I always use 25-inch mats, so that's why when I took this tent um, last year up to uh, Summit Lake, and we stayed in it, it was a little too tight. So I was wishing God I would love an alloc that was maybe a three-person. So that's why. I just love that this tent came out. So I'm gonna go get some, uh, some sleep mats and fill her up. Now, if we needed to vent, we could just pull that down, say it's in the winter, which is where I am right now. We could roll this up and get maximum ventilation. So in the winter, what I would do is I'd have it kind of like, kind of like that. Um, to get maximum ventilation during the winter time. And here you've got, you've got three pockets on both sides. That's a really nice touch. Of course, you're gonna have you know, three people in here. So this is a, my Osprey 88 liter pack. Um, and that fits in there just fine. So you could easily have two packs, packs in there. They won't be full of stuff, of course. You're gonna have your sleep gear and all that inside with you. So it's basically an empty pack and, and uh, yeah, so that's, that takes plenty, that's plenty of room for a 88 liter pack plus another pack on both sides, plus room to get out. Okay, another big question is, is it tall enough for, for somebody? I'm six feet tall. That's easily 11, 12 inches there. And down at my feet, 
I've got another maybe four or five inches down there. So if I'm in my sleeping bag, so I'd actually be, I like my head up. So there is in a quilt. And I'd actually, yeah, I, I like my head further to the, to the, so it's punching into the, the tent surface so I can put my pillow there. So plenty of room for over six feet tall. We got the top, little, little tabs all around. There's the pockets over there. There's pockets over here. I can bring that back. Yeah, just ton, tons of room. Love it. All right, so there's the Alec 3. I'm real excited about it. I hope I can get it up in the snow real soon. Um, for me, it's, it's the perfect dome tent for my lifestyle, for two people and, and a dog kind of safe type of thing. Um, I just, I love this size. The inner just by itself, um, you know, this has got DWR on it. If it's, if it's just a, you know, summertime and no, you know, maybe light sprinkles, that would be just, just fine. So um, good, good tent. And you can get the optional um, mesh, all mesh inner if you want to. So, all right, thanks a lot and hope to see you on the trail. Bye now.